everyone. My name is Randall J. Richards. Here's another video this week. I hope you're having a marvelous weekend, marvelous week. Uh, we're ending January, going into February, so let's get started. Topic of our video today is how to get business funding in 24 hours or less. And I mean business funding when money goes into your account, not just an approval. I'm going to outline five steps from start to finish of what's needed, if you're going to qualify, and what happens when you get an approval to funding. We'll do it quick. Make sure you understand all of the steps involved so that you have a smooth and easy process so you can focus on what's most important, your company and growing it. So thanks, guys. Subscribe, like. Um, thanks again for tuning in. You have a business, and that's amazing. But now you need money. What do you need the money for? That is the main, the most important question. You obviously have a need for funding. So if you don't know exactly what it is, you need to take a little time to see what you're going to put this money towards once you actually get it. That's the most important thing. Um, so if you don't know what you're using the money for, think about it. Look at your books. Do you need money um, you know, for payroll, marketing, hiring another employee? Do you have to bid on new jobs? Once you have a concrete plan, and it won't take long, you're ready to start. Until you have that plan, I wouldn't start the funding process. I would think of, do I really need the money? And what do I need it for? Most important. After that, this video is not for those in startup stages. I apologize. It is not. The lenders, the, the type of uh, funding I am talking about does require at least six months time in business and 7,500 or more in deposits into the business checking account each month and a business checking account, personal accounts, I've never seen them accepted, um, and if it was, it was an extremely rare, rare occasion. Open a business account so that you could separate personal and business. It's just, it's good for accounting and taxes. I am not an accountant or a lawyer, anything like that, but I've done this for five and a half years now. I have spoken with tens of thousands of business owners as a small business uh, in the lending industry, working with underwriters, funders, and sales reps alike. I know what everyone is looking for. Personal accounts, they don't work, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, set up a business account and, and you're, you're, you're going to be, you know, on the right path. So, you know, after you understand that you fit into that box where you're open six months, you have 7,500 or more in deposits and you know what you're looking to use the money for, the next step is to make sure that you're prepared when you start speaking to lenders that you have your documentation ready. I really, I love when clients come to us and they know their credit score. They have the, the MyFICO, the Identity IQ or Experian Direct, and they say, hey, Randy, my score was 690. Well, if they're pulling it off Credit Karma, I sometimes have a little, uh, you know, I, Credit Karma is good, but it's not as accurate as pulling it direct from an identity, uh, IQ, a MyFICO, an Experian. Those are the best. So if you come to me and you say, hey, my score was 710 or 690 or 650 or whatever, I said, okay, that's going to be pretty accurate. So I know this person has pretty good credit. You have your business bank statements ready. If you have online banking, log on, download them, take a look. Typically, lenders are going to look at anywhere from three to six months of recent statements. We are at the end of January, so a lender will ask from October through December. Even better if you could pull a month to date for January so it's ready for them. Normally, you'll be asked to upload this to their portal or their website whatever is the most secure. So now that you have everything ready, you know your score, you know the, the use of funds once you get approved, you know where your revenue has been and that you're doing a set amount, say it's 20 or 30,000 per month in deposits, 
you could start searching out the lenders. Lenders online, when you do simple search like how to get a business loan, how to get funding, fund my business, get working capital, there are so many different options I won't even start to list. You know, you have your on deck capitals, your cabbage, your blue vine, your fun box, your funding circle, rapid advance uh, finance, uh, McKenzie Capital, One Park. Then there's brokers involved, lending tree, businessloans.com. So many, so many. Fundera. So where do you start? Where do you start? And I, I know that it's it's overwhelming. So the first place you should start is after you understand your score, your revenue, look at some of those companies at the top. Do you meet what they're requiring? You know, for us, I work in the lending. Our company is RFR Capital, and we're based out of New York. We are like a broker, like a lending tree. Our minimum requirements are normally business owner or the owner or owners have 500 plus personal FICO and the same revenue, and we can get you approved. Typically, an approval for us uh, entails, you know, if there, if someone, Mr. Business Owner that owns uh, a restaurant is doing 20000 a month in deposits, we can get them approved between twenty and as much as 40000 Now, that doesn't take into account some of the other factors, but it's a good rule of thumb. So if you know your score and you go to an on-deck capital or a fun box, look around, see what their requirements are. If you wanna make a phone call to their 1-800 number, it takes a few minutes of your time. You don't have to do an application. You are not obligated. Get the answers to your questions and then see if they're a good fit. Now, after you have done your research, you feel comfortable with the companies or the company that you applied with, you will then be asked to do that application, which is simple info about the business, tax ID number, home uh, business address, start date, are you an LLC, corporation, a sole proprietor? These are you know simple, simple, straightforward, you know it off the top of your head. And then there'll be owner info or owners if there's more than one. And that's the personal info, date of birth, home address, social security number, percentage ownership of the company. After you have your application, they'll ask for those bank statements. Normally, uh, lenders, they don't typically request more than that unless there's a special request. Uh, it might be a picture of a driver's license or something to verify ownership of the company. Or if you use multiple business checking accounts and there's transfers going through uh, between the two accounts, they're probably going to ask for that other account to see the activity, which if you have online banking, which I suggest everyone signs up for it. I deal with a lot of clients that still do fax. Uh, not a lot, but a, a decent amount. It's just much easier. You don't have to worry about paperwork or statements getting lost in the mail. It's security. It's for your own peace of mind. And you could download an app if you have one of the banks or credit unions that have it, which they all do. And it's just easy for your accountant as well come tax time. So you have everything, you have decided which lender you want to work with, well, great. Now you're prepared, you submit your application, and typically, as long as everything is ready, you will now get the approval relatively quickly. If you submit an application at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning, you may very well have an approval by 2 or 3 that afternoon, depending on where you are. I had a client on Friday, this past Friday, who submitted an application at about 10.30 a.m. They submitted their bank statements. They submitted their application. It was a larger deal, so we required a tax return up front. We funded them with the wire in their account by 4.45 Eastern time. So this is how quick the transaction can happen if you have everything 
together, you get the approval, and boom, you have your money ready for that purpose, uh, that use of funds that you already know, you know, you already have in mind. So now you get your approval. What will typically happen is after you get your approval, uh, depending on the company, at our company, one of our sales uh, finance, senior finance managers would set up a time to speak, go over the numbers, um, over the phone, quick five minute conversation, get you um, everything necessary um, that if there's any further documentation to get you funded, send an email. Normally for majority of the transactions to proceed to funding, driver's license, picture or some sort of direct deposit information so that the lender can send the money to your account and then be able to uh, pull the payments um, with whatever you are approved for. Um, and just to give some info on that, uh, typically in the unsecured online lending space, payment structure varies. Um, they have monthly payments for some lenders, typically a little more involved. Credit does have to be very strong, seven, mid 700s, 700s or greater. Uh, there are biweekly payments, and then there's the traditional daily and weekly payments um, based off of sales. Uh, it's not, most lenders don't do that, that older version of the credit card uh, split. Uh, I'm sure you could find them. I We don't do them at our company, but it's, it's a little outdated. Everyone does the typical ACH deduction, which is just easier. Um, easier for you, the business owner, easier for the lenders um, to collect payments. So now after you speak with your rep, you wanna proceed, they request the documentation, you send it over. They'll typically, it'll be an online checkout to set up your portal, get funding or a DocuSign or Conga sign or whatever agreement that's sent electronically, you'll sign it, you'll complete it. Uh, they'll do, most lenders will do some sort of a bank verification link. Um, there's usually two big companies that handle this. Uh, there is Plaid and then there is Decision Logic. Completely encrypted, they'll send you a link, it'll link up with your uh, bank of, whatever bank you bank with, you'll put in your username and password, and you're probably asking, why would I do that, Randy? It's completely secure, it's encrypted. It is required by a lot of lenders uh, to protect you as the business owner and protect them as the lender in cases of fraud and also make sure they're sending the money to the correct account. Um, it's become pretty standard in the industry in the last few years. So don't be surprised when one of your lenders asks for it. It happens all the time. I've yet to have a client have an issue and worse comes to worse, you change your password after it's completed. Um, and from there, um, you'll probably get a phone call from the head underwriter for a funding call and they will be sending that money directly to your account. Or if you opt for an ACH, you'll see it the next day and you are going to officially be funded. So congratulations. You went through the process, you got it completed quickly. And now what would happen after that is this could be a one-time thing where you pay the loan off and that's it. Or most lenders will give you more money once you're 40 or 50% paid down. So I'm sure um, if that makes sense, if, if you want to use it that way, you could certainly come back for more funds. Typically, most lenders will give you better uh, rates and terms with good payment history. And there you go. You have an unsecured financing source. You got it in 24 hours or less. There wasn't too much documentation required, hopefully, pending you had it all set up and ready to go from the start. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments section. I can answer anything related to quick turnaround time business funding. Thanks for tuning in. You have a great rest of your week, guys. Subscribe now.